Some local business owners are bracing for more bad news. A vote by the city council today could extend a closure from seven days to a whole month. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. I'll tell you more about that. President Trump now considering a Korean War era act to combat COVID-19. I'm Alex Perche in Washington. I'll have those details coming up. And outside with live cam, one of our main headlines this morning here in South Texas is showers. And yeah, even a few springtime thunderstorms. His full forecast is coming up. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Hope you got some good rest last night. There's a lot going on in our world. Good morning to you. It is Thursday, March 19th. Thanks for being with us this morning, everybody. This close to your weekend. I was woken by some thunder this morning really early, so we got some good rain. We some parts of our area did. Some parts of our area have received some uh, beneficial rainfall, and radar has been active since the early, early morning hours. Yeah, we started about uh, 2 o'clock or so. We started to see some pretty good storms out there. These are all moving away, though, at this point, so we're starting to see things wind down a little bit here around San Antonio and especially up there across the hill country. Still a couple of returns, though, that I want to point out. Uh, let's first start up here in Gillespie County. We had a big time storm come through here a little bit earlier. That is well off to the north and east now. Things quieting down there. And then here around San Antonio, we had some showers and storms of our own. Not severe, but they did uh, drop some decent rain. Now one little cell north of Seguin. This doesn't even have lightning strikes with it, so it's more or less just a little downpour, but it's also going to move off to the north and east. I think we're pretty much done with the rain here in San Antonio this morning. Still some wet roads out there, as Nick will tell you here in just a second. Uh, temperature wise, 68 degrees comfort. 68 Canyon Lake, 70 New Braunfels, 70 Port SA. Yesterday we got up to 87. I don't think we'll be quite that warm today, but we could certainly see temperatures back in the 80s. We're shooting for 82. Mostly cloudy skies south. East Julie winds 5 to 15 miles per hour. But that southeast Julie wind, it's going to change tomorrow morning. We're going to get a northerly wind. Cold front comes through. Good rain chances tonight, tomorrow morning. More chances on Saturday too. So we've still got this active pattern in place. We're going to time it all out for you. Coming up here in just a bit. Well, let's talk traffic because things are getting busy out there. You got a lot of accidents going. Yeah, you could say things are heating up, Justin, out there. And uh, sure. the rain is uh, really affecting the roadways this morning. If you are on the way to work, just please use caution. Be careful. Very slick out there. All right, we have an accident uh, here. Eastbound Wurzbach Parkway in between uh, Nacogdoches, Wetmore areas with coming out on the access road. Please be careful. Wurzbach Parkway is very dangerous. And I, I say that with all seriousness it's a very dangerous parkway when it's wet especially a lot of winding roads there so please be very careful when driving down that parkway all right we have this accident eastbound loop 1604 north at lookout road still there looks like they had shut down 1604 at nacogdoches i'll get you an update on that here in a little bit to see what's going on there still we have this accident westbound northwest loop 410 at mccullough avenue that's still active involving an 18 wheeler so Things are still very busy. All right, what would the time saver traffic report be without a drive time? All right, if you're on 35 southbound from the city of New Braunfels, it's 1604, 15 minutes. And if you're on 35 southbound from loop 1604 to downtown, 12 minutes, not bad times there. Let's take a look outside. Things are looking good. Tannic Callahan right there. Things are looking good as well. Light to moderate traffic. Roadway still wet, though. 10 inbound, uh, inbound and outbound at Frio. Uh, very light to moderate traffic as well. 10 in Loop 1604 and 410 in McCullough. There's that accident that's been there for about two hours now. Please be careful when heading that way. Mark, Leslie, back to you. Thank you, Nick. Some local business owners will find out today just how long they'll be out of business due to the coronavirus. The city council will take a vote that could turn a seven-day closure into a month-long one. Trina Weber live near downtown with more on the story. We understand the businesses that have been closed include everything from bars to bingo parlors. Katrina? Well, that is right. The goal is to reduce the risk of this virus spreading among people, particularly in places where they would gather. Now, our camera was there as several bars around town began to close at midnight. Also on the latest closure list are gyms, theaters, bingo parlors, and bowling alleys. Restaurants are restricted to takeout and drive through orders only. Mayor Ron Nuremberg signed that order yesterday. A vote by city council today could extend it for 30 days. But one business owner told us her biggest concern is how this will impact her workers. I want to be very transparent with the team and I don't want to say, you know, everything's going to be fine because I don't know. You know, none of us know, like none of us know what's going to happen. We will find out more later today when City Council takes a vote. Stay tuned to KSAT 12 News and KSAT.com for the latest. Reporting live near downtown Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. 
Health officials are warning that the number of coronavirus cases here in Bear County could continue to increase over the next few days as testing becomes more available. Right now, there are 25 confirmed cases of COVID-19 in Bear County. City of San Antonio reports eight are travel related, four are close contact, 13 are under investigation in total. Metro Health has processed 135 tests for the county. Officials say the data does not indicate whether any of the cases were contracted through uh, community spread. The Emergency Operations Center continues to work with different agencies across the city to respond to the coronavirus. They were activated on Friday and KSAT was able to get a look inside. The San Antonio Police and Fire Department, along with local hospitals and state and federal agencies, are working together to discuss concerns like finance, logistics and planning. The last time the AOC was fully activated was during Hurricane Harvey back in 2017. San Antonio Botanical Garden closed today and will not reopen until further notice. All classes and events scheduled to take place at the gardens are canceled as well. The nonprofit made the decision out of a caution, uh, abundance of caution, the latest public health emergency here in the city. If you want to continue to donate to the Botanical Garden, you can visit the donation page of the organization's website. The blood drive we have been following this week is turning into a big success. So far, 828 people have donated blood with the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center since Tuesday. 328 people have donated at the Alamo Dome. The blood drive will continue today and tomorrow at the Alamo Dome. And you can find much more information about how to schedule an appointment on our website. If you're looking for another outlet to donate blood, we are having a KSAC Community Blood Drive tomorrow. It'll take place at High Point, which is on Data Point Drive. In order to follow social distancing guidelines, you'll need to schedule an appointment before you give. Experts say donating blood is safe during the pandemic and the coronavirus is not spread through blood transfusions. Our KSAC community partners are also sponsoring a phone bank to help Meals on Wheels in San Antonio. Starting at 9 this morning, you can call the number on your screen. You will be able to donate until 9.30 tonight. Meals on Wheels is continuing to provide seniors in need with food during this pandemic. You can find more information on both of these events in the community section of KSAT.com. Nationally, the coronavirus now reaching Capitol Hill as two members of Congress have now tested positive. And with much of the nation shutting down, the economy is taking a big hit. Lawmakers and the Trump administration are taking unprecedented steps to help Americans recover. ABC's Alex Preche has more. Of the thousands of U.S. patients with COVID-19, two are now members of Congress, Florida Congressman Mario Diaz-Balart and Utah Congressman Ben McAdams. The attending physician saying other members who made contact with the two are low risk. This comes as the Senate passed a relief bill Wednesday. Now lawmakers moving into phase three, finding ways to quickly put money in the hands of Americans. I, I view it as a, uh, in a sense, a wartime president. The president is pushing Congress to approve a massive trillion dollar plus economic recovery package. It could include $500 billion in direct payments to Americans, two rounds of checks sent out on April 6th and May 18th, $300 billion for small businesses, and a $50 billion bailout for the hard hit airline industry. But any deal would have to be worked out with Democrats. And now the president is prepared to invoke the Defense Production Act, a Korean War era law, allowing the president to direct American industries to produce critically needed medical equipment and protective gear. We are all in this together and we'll come through together. It's the invisible enemy. Doctors are warning they expect to see a surge in cases over the next four to five days as more tests come back. But say critical protective gear is running low and putting them in danger. I've got my mask for today right here um, and I'm guarding it with my life because it could be my life. New York City's mayor saying the president's actions in coming far too late. Right now, uh, president Trump at this point is the Herbert Hoover of his generation. There's a massive national crisis going on and he is consistently late and, and very you know marginal in what he does. Senator Mitch McConnell says Republicans will move at, quote, warp speed to craft that $1 trillion economic stimulus package, saying the deadline is this morning. Alex Perche, ABC News, Washington. The TSA says that it is allowing some passengers to go through security with expired driver's licenses. TSA says some people have not been able to get their license renewed amid the coronavirus pandemic. You can use an expired driver's license one year after any date past March 1st plus 60 days after the COVID-19 national emergency ends.
This morning, police will evaluate a man to see if he was driving while intoxicated after crashing his car. Police say the driver fell asleep while stopped at the light at Bitters in 281 shortly after midnight. They say a driver behind him honked his horn and woke him up. The driver then startled, drove his car right into a ditch. He was taken to a hospital with minor injuries.